Hello everyone, my name is Mad Vader DX UK and I want to welcome you to this uh, video which is a, uh, which is a start of a series of videos about the history of the radios that uh, I've got. This is inspired by uh, watching official SWL channel uh, Jills's videos where he goes through his uh, old radios, you know, says uh, how he bought them, how he used them, uh, what happened to them and uh, so on. So I'm going to do the same thing too. Um, okay, so I'm starting off with this here which is the Jupiteru MBT 7100 which is a wide band scanner now this one that you see here is my second one okay the first one I had I bought in the uh, late 90s and it broke down eventually um, I think uh, in the early 2010s and then I bought this second one here and the reason I, I bought this second one um, was that uh, I found it to be an excellent and very sensitive uh, scanner liked it so much um, you know so I thought the first one broke down i was gutted managed to find this one at a good price so why did i buy this back in the uh, late uh, 90s well the reason i bought this is because uh, people were commenting what an you know excellent um scanner this is the sensitivity and so on i thought well i'll buy it you know and um back then when i bought it yeah i was well i was already working um and yeah so obviously had disposable income and uh, with uh, buying this, you know, it was um, it was so uh, easy to receive things like the police, the fire, you know, fire brigade, the ambulance, you know, the all the emergency services. Well, they were still on analog, okay. Um, and also, I could receive things like cell phones, um, you know, mobile phones, and uh, what do you call them, cordless phones, uh, too. So yeah, plenty of entertainment to be had. Plus, I could receive other things like workplace communications. Uh, taxis, uh, marine band, air band, you know, and uh, so on. And uh, yeah, what it was, the other thing as well was that before that, before buying this Jupiter scanner back in the late 90s, um, I had a, what you call it, a steeple tone radio or receiver. Now, it was just a plain old uh, radio, I think, made back in either the 70s or the early 80s. I can't remember now. Um, but I was given that uh, uh, radio and the thing it was it was meant more for uh, things like the marine band and for listening to uh, airplanes but the thing is the frequencies that it had on that you could you know uh, receive you know the police fire ambulance and so on um very easily on that because the frequencies that were using um which was around the 2 meter band um you know that radio could receive the 2 meter band um very easily you know it had the frequency coverage for that and it was actually very sensitive for what it was right but buying this when I bought this the advantage it had was you could put memories of frequencies so I could skip very quickly to police fire ambulance and so on and you know program a lot of other uh, frequencies uh, on it too the other thing I really liked was I could scan um, you know on um, scan the bands uh, as well and it would pick up stuff that you know again I'd never known before because uh, either my steeple tone didn't have the frequency coverage or I would miss it. You know, I just couldn't get it with my steeple tone uh, receiver anyway, but this could. So, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it is, it is, I still find it to be an excellent, um, you know, wideband scanner. At the time I bought this, um, it was during the uh, scanner craze when people were buying these scanners to listen to like i said the emergency services but also phone uh, conversations right and the thing is because i've spoken to jills about this uh, on his live stream the thing i want to point out about these wideband scanners when the scanner craze was happening was that people were buying these not because they were interested in radio like propagation the ionosphere or the you know two meter band or anything like that because if uh, for example if i told somebody you know who i knew um you know that had one of these i said oh the propagation tonight on the two meter band is excellent they'll probably look at me you know like as you know as if i was an alien that just landed on planet earth all right i would say this is just an est estimate 95 percent of people that had a scanner back then didn't know much about radio or knew very little they only bought these right exclusively just to listen to the emergency services or phone conversations right and yeah th you know this is you know this is why th these uh you know scanners that you know back then like you know like for example this yuguteru and many others back then they sold you know they, i would say they sold a uh, a good number the thing though is that for example all the emergency services now over here they're, they've all gone to digital and they are encrypted 
which is a great thing uh, because um, and also the same thing goes with mobile phones they're encrypted too you might be able to pick up the odd cordless phone conversation you know people who are still using the old uh, cordless phones that are not encrypted but it's very few and far between and maybe one or two baby monitors uh, for example which i think the they're still around the 50 megahertz uh, range but the thing is is that uh, the the reason I would say that you know all this has moved to digital and encryption you know like mobile phones and ambulances and you know the emergency services was that for example I give you an example um, with regards to mobile you know phone conversations I remember um, in the uh, uh, I think it was in the early nineties when a phone conversation here in the UK was intercepted said to be of um, the late uh, Princess Diana of uh, Wales um, and um, what it was, I think the phone conversation was uh, about her having um, an affair, right? And it was picked up by, by some random somebody. It wasn't picked up by a member of, uh, of the press or anybody. It was picked up by somebody who was an enthusiast of receiving phone conversations and all that. He recorded it and then he passed it on to, I think he, he passed it on to the press, okay? And then eventually it got, you know, it got exposed in the newspapers and so on. And the other thing as well is that um, with regards to the emergency services, I remember I used to hear people say, you know, they would talk on, on for example, most commonly on the police frequency and say really stupid things, you know, which was even more stupid because they could be talking at the time, you know, during, you know, when, when, some, when an emergency or something, you know, something um, urgent was happening. So I'm glad in the end, even though this receives, for example, a lot less now, compared to in the past you know i'm glad that all these services you know um the emergency services and also mobile phone conversations have gone prior you know are encrypted you know so that people can have privacy when they talk on their you know uh, on their mobile phones now for what i receive now these days um i you know i use this to sometimes receive the air band i mostly use this between the uh, 24 to 30 megahertz range when there's f2 propagation to listen to um you know free banders um also to listen to hams on the um on the 10 meter band um you know especially like for example when uh, this propagation coming from the usa i would tune into the new york repeater on 29620 uh, um, kilohertz for example so that's the the you know the range i listen to the most on this Jupiter scan app and that's because it is very very sensitive um indeed um, other things I might listen to, I might listen to the two meter band to see if there's any hams talking on my local repeater um, and maybe on the 70 centimeter band as well. Um, so, yeah, so really, you know, it is a great sensitive receiver. I recommend one if you uh, listen to th uh, like to listen to st uh, stuff above the 24 megahertz range. If you're thinking about getting this for shortwave, I don't recommend it because uh, the sensitivity below uh, 24 megahertz uh, falls off um and also it's too wide for the shortwave band it already has one bandwidth filter a permanent one and uh, that's it um even though this like for example this has things like single sideband um you know at lower sideband upper sideband and so on doesn't matter what mode you use it'll still be too wide um so i don't recommend it for you know uh, for a shortwave and also this doesn't have digital modes either um you know doesn't have things like um, dmr or doesn't do trunking and so on so this is a plain old analog um receiver but yeah so sum up great um wide band, wide band scanner that i bought in the late 90s listened to all sorts back then um like i said emergency services mobile phone conversations before they went uh, they started encrypting them sort of like the in the mid uh, 2000s um and again i bought this second one because like i said i like to listen to stuff on the 11 and 10 meter bands um you know and uh, this picks it up you know picks up all sorts from those bands really really well and the other thing i should point out too is the uh, again i was uh, s saying about the modes this has a uh, single side band and all that it's got a list i'll tell you what modes it has single side band lower side band upper side band am mode and uh narrow fm mode and also wide fm mode to listen to fm broadcasters though it comes out way too wide on this um, again i wouldn't recommend this to listen to your local fm um station so that's the story of uh, this jupiteru mvt 7100 thank you very much for watching i'll see you in another video